Fresh Tissue Examination The methods of tissue examination may vary according to the structural and chemical components of the cells to be studied, the nature and amount of the tissue to be evaluated, and the need for an immediate examination of a tissue structure. Examination may be done on fresh or preserved tissues depending upon necessity. Fresh tissues have the advantage of being examined in the living state, thereby allowing protoplasmic activities such as motion, mitosis, phagocytosis, and pinocytosis to be observed. Its use has been limited, however, because of the fact that tissues examined in a fresh state are not permanent and therefore are liable to develop the changes that have usually been observed after death. One method of fresh tissue examination is through teasing or dissociation. This is a process whereby a selected tissue specimen is immersed in a watch glass containing isotonic salt solution carefully dissected or separated and examined under the microscope either unstained by face contrast or bright field microscopy or stained with differential dyes another technique is through squash preparation or otherwise known as crushing this is a process whereby small pieces of tissue not more than one millimeter in diameter are placed in a microscopic slide and forcibly compressed or crushed with another slide or with a cover glass. If necessary, a vital stain may be placed at the junction of the slide and the cover glass and allowed to be absorbed by the tissue through capillary action. A vital stain class, by the way, means that this type of stain is used to demonstrate organelles from the cells. Let's say, for example, to demonstrate mitochondria. Next is smear preparation. This is the process of examining sections or sediments whereby cellular materials are spread lightly over a slide by means of a wire loop or applicator or by making an apposition smear with another slide. This technique is especially useful in cytological examinations such as pap smear, you write this down, pap smear, PAP smear, particularly for cancer diagnosis. The specimens that you may use may not be limited to tissue samples, but as well as sputum samples, what else? Plural, peritoneal, cerebrospinal fluid samples, our centrifuge and the sediments of this sample will be collected and then spread lightly using a wire loop or an applicator on the slide. Under smear preparation class, we have streaking. With streaking, you will use um, an applicator stick or a platinum loop. The material is rapidly and gently applied in a direct or zigzag line throughout the slide, attempting to obtain a relatively uniform distribution of secretion. Too thin or too thick smears have to be avoided since they make the tissues unsuitable for examination. Streaking class, this is the same way how you spread or streak your bacterial samples into an agar. So just imagine that type of technique, streaking. Still under smear preparation class, we have spreading. A selected portion of the material is transferred to a clean slide and gently spread into a moderately thick film by teasing the mucous strands apart with an applicator stick. This method is a little more tedious than streaking, but has the advantage of maintaining cellular interrelationships of the material to be examined. It is especially recommended for smear preparations of fresh sputum and bronchial aspirates and also for thick mucoid secretions. Another technique still under smear preparation is pull apart. This is done by placing a drop of secretion or sediment upon one slide and facing it to another clean slide. 
the material disperses evenly over the surface of the two slides, slight movement of the two slides in opposite direction. So you pull them apart. This is necessary to initiate the flow of materials. The two slides are then pulled apart with a single uninterrupted motion and the specimen placed under the microscope for immediate examination or still applied with vital, vital stains. This is useful for prepara uh, the preparation of smears of thick secretions such as serous fluids, concentrated sputum, enzymatic lavage samples from the GIT and blood smears. And lastly, under smear preparation is what we call touch preparation or the impression smear. This is a special method of smear preparation whereby the surface of a freshly cut piece of tissue is brought into contact and pressed onto the surface of a clean glass slide. So impression, you make an impression. Allowing the cells to be transferred directly to the slide for examination by phase contrast microscopy or stain for light microscopic study. It has an advantage in that the cells may be examined without destroying their actual intercellular relationship and without separating them from their normal surroundings. Another technique is through frozen section. This method is normally utilized when a rapid diagnosis of the tissue in question is required. Usually, you can get the results within 5 to 15 minutes class from the surgery, from the patient's body going to the laboratory, processed, and then you can get the results within 5 to 15 minutes. This is also especially recommended when lipids and nervous tissue elements are to be demonstrated. How do you do frozen sections? Very thin slices around 10 to 15 micro in thickness are cut from a fresh tissue frozen on a microtome with carbon dioxide or on a cryostat. Remember our lecture a while ago about a cryostat? This is a cold chamber where there is already a built-in microtome inside. So it keeps an atmospheric temperature of negative 10 to negative 20 degrees Celsius. The frozen sections are then transferred to a slide and processed for light microscopic study readily available uh, and to be read by the pathologist. F 5 to 15 minutes later, the pathologist will then call surgeons or the OR if either it's a benign or malignant and then they have to remove the entire body part or not. So that's how it is done in the laboratory. Frozen sections, both fixed and unfixed, have many applications in histotechnology and are commonly used for rapid pathologic diagnosis during surgery, diagnostic and research enzyme histochemistry, Diagnostic and research demonstration of soluble substances such as lipids and carbohydrates, immunofluorescent and immunohistochemical staining, and some specialized silver stains, particularly for neuropathology. The tissue for freezing should be fresh, and freezing should be done as quickly as possible. Slow freezing can cause distortion of tissue due to ice crystal artifacts. The more commonly used methods of freezing include One, we have liquid nitrogen. This is generally used in histochemistry and during operative procedures and is the most rapid of the commonly available freezing agents. Its main disadvantage though is that soft tissue is liable to crack due to the rapid expansion of the ice within the tissue producing ice crystals or freeze artifacts. It also overcools urgent biopsy blocks, causing damage to both block and blade if sectioning is done at negative 70 degrees Celsius or below. The tissue snap frozen in liquid nitrogen must therefore be allowed to equ equilibrate to cryostat chamber temperature before sectioning is attempted. The majority of non-fatty and fixed tissues are sectioned well at temperatures between negative 10 
and negative 25 degrees Celsius. One problem with the use of liquid nitrogen is that it causes a vapor phase to form around the tissue, acting as an insulator that causes uneven cooling of tissue, particularly of muscle biopsy, and making diagnostic interpretation difficult. This problem can be overcome by freezing the tissue in isopentane, OCT or otherwise known as optimal cutting temperature, or Freon 2.2 that has a high thermal conductivity. Isopentane is liquid at room temperature. A Pyrex glass beaker is usually suspended in a flask of liquid nitrogen until half liquid and half solid stage is reached. The beaker is removed from the liquid nitrogen when small crystals start forming on the side of the beaker that is approximately negative 170 degrees Celsius, and the tissue to be frozen, which is either affixed on a cork disc, aluminum foil, or cryostat chuck, is dropped into the cooled isopentane. Tissue blocks can also be frozen by adapting a conventional freezing microtome gas supply of carbon dioxide from a CO2 cylinder or by using a specially made piece of equipment. Usually, this is the one used by the cryostat class. The use of aerosol sprays has become also increasingly popular in recent years and is adequate for freezing small pieces of tissue, except muscle. The processing of tissues using either fresh or preserved tissues are usually examined when there is an immediate need for evaluation. A better and more effective means, however, of studying tissues, whether normal or abnormal, is by examination of their sections and smears which have been permanently preserved, stained for demonstration of specific structures, and mounted on glass slides with cover slips for permanent keeping. Solid structures and tissues must be preserved and carefully processed in the following order. Please memorize these steps by heart. The 10 steps of tissue processing. We have fixation. What does fixation do again? To preserve the specimen. Next is dehydration. What's its main purpose? To remove intra and extracellular water from the tissue and prior to wax impregnation. Next is clearing or dealcoholization. This is the removal of alcohol, giving translucent appearance to the tissue. That's not decalcification, that's dealcoholization, okay? Next is infiltration or impregnation. This is to remove the clearing agent to facilitate easy cutting. Next is embedding, otherwise known as casting or blocking. This is the process by which the impregnated tissue is placed into a precisely arranged position or orientation. Remember the word orientation? in a mold containing a medium which is then allowed to solidify. Next step, sixth step is trimming. This is to remove the excess wax from embedding step. Seventh is section cutting or microtomy. This is to cut the paraffin um, embedded sections into thin slices, four to six micra. Next is staining, the application of the different dyes to the slide containing your tissue specimen. Next is mounting, this is to avoid removal of tissue from the slide for permanent keeping. Mounting, that's the ninth step, my mounting. And the last but not the least is the most important, labeling from the requisition down to all the processes up to for the reading of the pathologist the labels must be attached either through a piece of paper from the start writing it on the frosted edge of the slide using a pencil you always have to leave um, a remembrance a mark a label to the sample or the specimen. 
So now we are down to the documentation for histopathologic and cytologic reports. For surgical pathology, cytology, and autopsy report, you must provide three copies per report. So that's three copies per report. For signatories, you must make sure that the request form contains the patient's doctor's signature for legitimacy purposes, as well as on the result form, it should have the clinical and anatomic pathologist signatures. The ideal routine turnover of results for surgical pathology and cytology reports must be done within 24 hours from the delivery of the specimen. For frozen sections, the ideal time is around 5 to 15 minutes from the delivery of the specimen to the laboratory. Autopsy reports takes around one week to be finalized. How are specimens stored in the laboratory? For blood specimens class, that's usually one month to one year from the extraction. For serum or body fluids, that's 48 hours from removal from the body. Pathologic or bone marrow slides should be kept for 10 years. Tissue blocks must be also stored for 10 years. Slides kept indefinitely. Different types of slides, whatever slides will it be, that should be stored indefinitely. Autopsy reports must also be stored indefinitely. And lastly, for surgical pathology or bone marrow reports, it must be stored for at least 10 years. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've learned something from me today. For questions, I will still make another poll in our Histopathologic Facebook page so that I can answer all your inquiries and questions. God bless you and have a pleasant day.